single mother appearing to them. <clears throat> the Catholics say Mother Mary is appearing to them. And the Protestants say something else, that was Christ appeared to them. So the basic chemistry that's stimulating the brain is the same, but the explanations are given by the culture. Now notice this interesting effect. It's a Strassman's work called The Spirit Molecule. Uh, the typical experiences are kaleidoscopic display of visual hallucinations, separation of consciousness from the physical body, very much like the diagram sequence I showed you with that near-death experience, <clears throat> feelings of another, the feeling of a presence. Almost always is a feeling of a presence. And cultures can identify it as a, a spirit guide or a, a dead person or an iconic individual, such as a local religious feature, figure. They're all basically the feeling of another. <coughs> now, some people have the capacity to make DMT within the pineal organ because melatonin is effectively that compound, effectively N-acetyl-5-methoxytryptamine. So some of you can be naturally high. I've been accused of that. I've been accused of being naturally high because, well, actually it's not just unique to me, most creative people, the musicians, the writers, the poets, the sculptors, all of those individuals often have a altered brain chemistry that gives them insight into other relationships and to other patterns. So some people may take drugs and have it. Other people do it spontaneously. And some people may be due to an actual modification of their experience. Did you realize that Luther, Martin Luther, who started Lutheranism, was a basically low-rate, second-rate monk until he was struck by lightning. The changes in his temporal lobe organization and the chemistry that he obviously experienced subsequent to that resulted in a massive change of human history. So the point is, that these particular compounds can be made in the brain. It's just that drugs enhance what's already there. Themes of experiences, other planets, contacts with aliens, other dimensions, white spaces, places and people from the past, cartoon-like people. The same kind of sequence I mentioned for mescaline shows up in the ayahuasca sequence as well. Now I had the uh, privilege of evaluating and chatting with a scientist, a BBC science director. As you know, very often we have visits from film crews and so forth on the campus that come to be stimulated by the helmet. And the helmet produces effects which are very, very similar because we imitate what the drugs do, what the compounds do, without any side effects. In this case, he reported what he'd experienced down when he took Al Yega, which is the local name for ayahuasca, <clears throat> and he said, if I kept my eyes open, I would see people in the room. When I closed my eyes, I saw people and images floating as well as forces and colors emerging from people's heads. I experienced a male voice that said it was instructing me. It referred to we, the voice oriented along the right side of my body. Okay, ready? If the voice is located on the right side of the body, which part of the brain is being stimulated? Left, left side, left temporal lobe, exactly. It gives you the left temporal lobe being stimulated. There was an intense feeling of a presence. I attributed it to God. The Roman Catholics who were present, most of them Spanish descendants, attributed it to the Virgin Mary. The local tribal natives attributed it to the presence of the jungle mother. So remember, the experience, the basic pattern of firing is similar, except that the name and the attribution, the explanation, is a function of uh, the culture. Now, he says, images were along my right visual field, Geometric forms with deep emotion were more perceptible along my left visual field. So perceptual along my left visual field means what? Right hemispheric. And usually geometric forms would show up over the left side, the left visual field, because it's right hemisphere, spatial patterns associated with the right hemisphere, and more uh, language being attributed to the right side. He heard a voice. We are your genes. The crystals that prevented access to knowledge have melted away, and now you have access to knowledge. The voices said they would give me a gift. The gift was total recall. Now, I don't know if that was before or after the Schwarzenegger movie, <laughs> but the point is, very often your own experiences and your cultural experiences are incorporated into the phenomenon. When I asked the genes uh, why, did people, uh, why people did not die after they had children, because after all, one of our primary purposes is to maintain this DNA sequence, the voices said, we too are electronic systems that have a life of our own. And seven, a few days of nightly consumption of Al Yega, 
I could sit near somebody and just know all of the facts about the person. I felt I was reading other people's thoughts and hearing knowing events. So in other words, this is a classic kind of altered state. And you can see why it's a powerfully personal kind of experience and why it has political impact and economic impact. Can you imagine a drug that allows you to experience, if it's true, to experience what other people are thinking? No more secrets. No more hiding. Basically, there's nothing that can be kept from anyone else. Not that it would become the Borg, all right, of Star Trek fame. But the point is, if this was true, you can imagine this would change the way our societies would interact forever. All right. And you can see why they would be a threat to some. Now, other kinds of... Uh, did, you, did, you ever, did you ever see what happened? The, the actual person who... Uh, uh, Hoffman, who brought about LSD, discovered LSD in 1943. Hoffman was trying to find a cure for migraine headaches using ergot. Ergot, of course, is the compound made from the fungus of rye, one of the reasons that there were big epidemics of seeing werewolves and all kinds of things during the Middle Ages. People would have contaminated rye bread and hallucinate in mass. But uh, did you ever see his actual statement when he actually got it on his fingers? Well, here's what he said. Last Friday, in the midst of my afternoon work in the laboratory, I had to give up working. I had to go home because I experienced a very peculiar attack of dizziness. At home, I went to bed and got into a not unpleasant state of drunkenness, which was characterized by an extreme stimulating fantasy. When I closed my eyes, the daylight was almost most unpleasant to me. I experienced fantastic images of an extraordinary plasticity. They were associated with an intense kaleidoscope play of colors. After about two hours, this condition had disappeared. He just got it on his fingers. Can you imagine what would happen if you had a compound you could breathe like that? Incidentally, the idea of manipulating and influencing populations by something in the water supply is not unusual. Do you realize that the WHO, the World Health Organization, actually thought about and had a motion to put Valium all right, into the water supply of Lebanon? during one of the first Lebanon crises in order to minimize aggression. Incidentally, you know about hemp and hashish, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. I've actually had letters from people, let's say, in the Middle East who argue, is there any electromagnetic pattern that you can give me that if someone is taking hashish would incapacitate them? The idea that drugs have political impact as well as personal impact is really one of the greatest challenges, not only to brain and behavior, but to civilizations. Well, what about this one? Marijuana or cannabis. The active ingredient is delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, and the typical concentration in a marijuana cigarette, about 1 to 4 percent THC. Go ahead. Yeah, I had a question about what you said about uh, Eliega. Is there any Anything to indicate that there are drugs out there that would allow us the ability to read other people's thoughts? Well, there are lots of drugs that the question is, are there lots of drugs out there that can allow us to read people's thoughts? The first thing you'd have to do is to differentiate, is it just a subjective experience? Because if you stimulate the amygdala and certain other areas at the same time you have any experience, you'll think it's true. I mean, during the time of stimulations of the temporal lobe, if you stimulate the temporal lobe, people can be listening to a foreign language and think they understand it. All right, because you have to realize the brain is being modified by these drugs. So you'd have to have an external kind of uh, modification as well, or an external kind of verification. Um, the sensibility seeds, 6%. Hashish. You've heard of hashish before, haven't you? Okay. The resin of cannabis flowers, 8 to 14%. Hashish, where have you seen that before? Hashish, of course, comes from the word, the Arabic word meaning assassin. That's right. During the 11th or 13th century, there were a whole group in the Middle East called assassins. They stopped Genghis Khan cold, as well as the Mongols. And of course, by consuming this material, they felt totally immortal, totally super in terms of power and capacity. And you can imagine what it's like if you have someone in your midst who can simply go up and kill you. and.